hey guys hello everyone and welcome to the channel so if you are following this particular channel you might be aware about it that i have joined as a postdoc here in usa and it's been around two months now and uh, we have uh, phd students here we have undergrads we have master students and upon interacting with them i got to know a lot many things about phd students or the life of a phd scholar here in us so i thought of making a video because i have done my phd from india and uh, we i can now relate that what exactly is the difference between doing phd from india and doing phd from abroad especially us so i thought of making a video where i'm going to tell you about the difference between doing phd from india and doing phd from abroad and uh, particularly usa uh, there are uh, like the con the things which i'm going to talk about also applies on phd from europe but there are slight differences those i will definitely include while i'll be explaining about that okay so let's talk about this in detail hopefully if you are someone who is preparing for phd and you might get some new insights and you might change your ideas okay so let's talk about difference of doing phd in india and phd in abroad particularly in usa so the first difference is very obvious that is the level of research or the level of infrastructure which you get so with infrastructure there are many things which comes okay with infrastructure comes your facilities with infrastructure comes uh, the amount the instrumentations the uh, the more complex or you can say more advanced instrumentation then uh, with infrastructure comes the type of labs which you get so both these things are different okay so in india the level of infrastructure or the level of lab instrumentation all these things are very nice in IITs especially I will say IITs and ISERs uh, even some CSR labs they have some top-notch in, uh, like instrumentation and they have some very world-class uh, you know infrastructure but they are few okay in India they are few but if you come to US majority of the places you will find top-notch infrastructure and uh, like the instrumentation and all the facilities which I am telling that is like way better than in India. So I will say that in most of the places in India, you won't be getting those facilities. But if you come to US for your PhD, you will be getting uh, these facilities. And what this facilities actually uh, makes the difference. See, I'll give you an example. Okay. So in India, let's say if you are, if you are, if you want to do, let's say some uh, research in bio related topic. Okay. So there is an instrument called as uh, cryo electron microscope which is very rarely found in india there are just two or three places where you will get that instrument but in us uh, they are there are more number of cryo ams okay uh, so it's like if you will see those instrument if you will you know uh, do a hands-on practice on them so you will be having a better opportunity that like you will be having you will be getting trained much better right uh, same goes for many instrumentation i had many friends in many iits and isers also like which have like the instrumentation were not there let's say they don't have a, a scanning electron microscope uh, i'm not talking about iits but yeah there are some nits they don't have scanning electron microscope let's say so they send their samples to the another institute to get the data from there so they don't know anything about that what how that instrument looks how it functions how you can operate that to get the best result it is some uh, operator who is doing that work for you and just giving you the data you are analyzing the data and you are trying to interpret that okay so that goes uh, that's the major difference if you do the instrumentation by your hands or by yourself or if you send it to some other place and get it done by somebody okay so that comes with the infrastructure so that's the huge that's that's a huge difference between these two things i will say uh, if you compare it from India and for, with US. The second thing is uh, the amount of stipend which you get. Okay, So the amount of stipend which you get in India is decent. It's not very good I will say but it's decent. Okay, That means you can live along with it. Uh, you can even save some money if you can. Okay, So recently the stipend has been increased and I hope you already know about it. I have made a video about that. So I'll add the link for that if you want to look upon it. So yeah, the stipend in India depends upon like whether you are a JRF or whether you are getting an institute fellowship or whether you are a PMRF, depending upon that, the amount is different. But in US, the amount is slightly better. Uh, the fellowship which you get is slightly better. But 
if you talk about the purchasing power because that's the criteria to measure how much amount or how much money you are getting okay you might think that 40000 in india is lesser than getting 3 lakhs or 2 lakhs in us but it's like the purchasing power because the amount of uh, like spend which you are doing in us that is also going to be more here okay so that's if you talk about purchasing power so i would say that both of these the fellowship amount which you get in india and the amount which you get in us is quite comparable it's not much difference not a huge difference okay so yeah that's what it is the third thing is regarding the fees of the of the course okay so in india if you want to do phd the fees is very minimal that means the amount of fees which you pay every semester that's very minimal and it's very less actually it's especially if you are doing it from some universities uh, then in that case the fees is even less in iit's fees is little higher but yeah you are you will be getting the uh, the facilities also right over there so in us the fees is very high okay the fees per semester is very high compared to in india now compared to india okay so yeah in uh, comparison to fees you will get a huge hike in us compared to india okay the next thing is work life balance and that's what is really really important if you are doing phd okay so in india if you are lucky if you are very lucky in that case you will be getting a good guide or a good lab where you can maintain your work life okay but uh, in most of the cases you will see that the work life balance is not that good if you talk to your seniors if you if you talk to some research scholar they will tell you that how they are working since 9 am the 9 am in the morning to 9 am in the evening which is around 12 hour work which is too much even people work more than that and that just ruins the uh, work life balance the person does not get time for his own things and for a short duration it's fine but for a longer duration it's frustrating and that leads to depression and so many different things happen okay so work life balance is very rarely seen in india but in us it is given a high priority that the phd scholar is having a good work life balance uh, they just have to work from 9 to 5 that is around uh, like 8 hour work and then they have uh, weekends holiday also look like the work life balance is given um, is maintained much better in us also in europe in europe it is it is even better okay so the work life balance is maintained so that the person uh, does not get into all those depression and all those things okay so yeah depend this is something which i really like about the phd because see uh, in india i have seen um, like my although i was lucky enough my lab was good but yeah i have seen my friends i have seen my seniors i have seen many people around who are Uh, not able to maintain their work life and at the end they, they get frustrated and depressed but here in us the work life is maintained very nicely okay so moving ahead to the next point which is about how much funding you are getting so as i said if the infrastructure is high the us government funds actually government does not funds here are a lot of funding agencies like nih nih is there there are many other funding agencies who give grants and getting a grant in us is very easy compared to getting a grant in india in india there are organization like serb then there is csir then there is ugc then there is dst they, these are the organizations which fund for research in india and getting a grant is difficult over there okay because it's you know it's difficult to get money and do research and if the person or if the lab is not having money again that comes to the infrastructure of the lab uh the facilities provided over there are not that good in that case and then comes the thing that how easy it is to get into phd so uh in india uh, it is very difficult to get into phd because you have to go through a uh, exam either you have to qualify csir net exam for getting into csir labs or universities to get a fellowship and get into phd uh, then you have to qualify gate uh, in order to get into iits and isers um and then there are an individual entrance exams also so, so there are exams national level exams or all india level exam which you have to qualify in order to become eligible and then apply for phd in these institutes whereas to get into phd in in the institutes in usa it's not that difficult many places ask for gre of course 
and many places ask for 2FL and GRE uh, like scores many places have you know uh, like they, they don't have that criteria you just have to apply to a particular lab and if they find you eligible or you suited for that or if they find uh, your application interesting then in that case they are going to take you as a as a PhD scholar so I'll be talking about this in more detail okay how to get into PhD in US because that is something I know many people must be interested about so do let me know in the comment section if you want a detailed video on that but yeah these are certain points which I thought uh, which is a difference over here but at the end I'll just tell you one more thing which is very important okay if you are someone who is planning to do higher uh, like like education or someone who is who's planning to become an assistant professor who is planning to become a professor in India okay if you are someone who wants to do that if you are if you want to settle in India and want to become assistant professor in that case you have to qualify exam which is a UGC net exam or net exam to become eligible to apply as assistant professor which you have to do even if you have done PhD in abroad that doesn't matter okay if you come back to India and if you apply for uh, you know for assistant professor in that case they are definitely going to ask you that whether you have qualified this exam or not which is UGC net LS exam lecturership exam so in case if you are planning to do research in abroad also in that case I will suggest you to qualify this exam and then go and do research okay and in case if you are doing research in India then of course you should uh, qualify this exam definitely so all in all if uh, if you ask me that uh, whether a particular if I will suggest a particular student to go and do research in USA or uh, do research in abroad I will definitely tell them that after masters you should at least try to get a PhD in abroad and do PhD in like if you if you think that you are interested in higher studies if you are interested in research if you are interested in scientific research you want to become a good scientist you want to become a, a, a good knowledgeable professor and so on in that case you should actually apply at least try for that okay if you get it it's really good and of course in India we have our own system we have our own things but yeah that's one of the advice which I will be giving all the students who have qualified masters okay so at least try to get PhD from abroad okay that will give you a different uh, like very different experience and that you are definitely going to like okay so that's all from my side for this particular video i hope i have given you a few insights about it and do let me know in the comment section if you have any particular question about it and uh, that's all from my side take care bye bye and see you in the next one till then